All right. Well, I assume last night you got my email. You got the, uh, we got the second milestone of the project back to you. There is one comment that I would like to make about that. A number of you combined the enum for the addressing modes with the enums for the mnemonics. Now, uh, the word mnemonic in assembly language, a mnemonic in the assembly language is that part of the assembly language a code that identifies which instruction it is. For example, store word accumulator, this is a mnemonic. Okay, so this is a mnemonic. Now if you say 0, X, 0, 0, A, B, comma, S, all right, this, this r represents the addressing mode. It specifies the addressing mode in assembly language. It's not a mnemonic, all right? It's an addressing mode, and so, um, and so what you should do, what you need to do is, here again, in the comments that I made on your programs, they're not just suggestions, they're mandatory. You need, if I make comments on how to change your code, you need to change it the way. And now, um, and, and so a lot of you had mnemonics, a lot of you had enumerateds for these, and you just included, the, you just included these in the same enumerated. But that's not correct, okay? You need to do it separately, yeah. Why does it matter? Now, that is a really good question, and I'm glad you asked. Because we are going to use the ordinal value of the addressing mode enums to help us generate the code. Now, are you, so there's a specific reason. Well, besides that, you guys, look, even if we weren't doing that, it would be a bad idea to mix them up like that. Because it's like because technically not. They're, they're not mnemonics, they're different things. Yeah. Well, you, could, well, you could have called it something else, like list of things. Yeah, but why? Yeah, but it doesn't look, you guys, software engineering. You want to have the, everything be self documented. They're self documenting. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You need to have a separate set of enums for each different thing that you're enumerating. You see, it would be like enumerating the days of the week with the, I don't know, with the planets. You know, you could have an enum for all the planets and then the days of the week. Well, you would want to combine the days of the weeks with the planets and then an enum. You see what I'm saying? That's not good software design. I mean, just from a style, from just from a software engineering style perspective. Are you with me? But but in this case, it's there's even more of a reason. In fact, now uh, what we're, what we want to talk about today is um, code generation, because. Um, the next assignment, which is due on Thursday, is the third and final milestone for the project, which is code generation. Okay, now, actually, before we do that, there were two assignments that were due, or were there two programs, or just one program that was due? There were two. Oh, yeah, there were, what, what, what were they? The, okay, so the two assignments that were due today were uh, assignments to translate a program that passes parameters, one using, oh, using call by reference. One using uh, global variables, passing a global variable by reference, and another one passing a local variable by reference. <laughs> so maybe before we, um, let's take a little, do a little interlude here, and before we proceed with code generation and all this stuff about addressing modes and enumerated types, let's see if there's any questions about the homework that's due today. Okay, so there's no more questions about the uh, homework that's due today. Okay, oh, let's review this. <laughs> okay, let's go, let, let's go back to when you pass a global variable by reference. When you pass a global variable by reference, how do you get the address of the global variable on the runtime stack? You load word accumulator with what? Yeah, y yes, what, what's immediate? You, you, load the, you load the symbol immediate. Right, you load the symbol, because what is a symbol? A symbol is a what? Is, is an address. So the way you get that, the address of the global variable on the, on the runtime stack is you load word accumulator, the symbol using immediate addressing, and that puts its address on the stack. Then in the function, if it, acts, if it wants to access the address, 
directly, what does it use? Stack relative. But if it wants to access what it is pointing to, what does it use now? Stack relative deferred. Okay, so that was a little bit of a review on how that works. And let's review the other one. How do you, how do you push the address of a local variable which is on the runtime stack? There's a special instruction you have to use, remember? Move SP, move the stack pointer to the accumulator. That gets the what in the accumulator? The address of the top of the stack. And then how do you get the address that's, you have to add accumulator the, uh, yeah, yes, you have to add accumulator the offset, which, which that local variable equates to. And then that's the address. And then what, but then once the address gets put up in the function, the function doesn't care or know whether it was a global or a local. As all it knows is that it's an address, so it still references it the same way. Okay, so that was a little bit of a review on how the homework, how you have to do your homework for tonight. All right, are we good? Okay, now, um, let's move on to code generation. So here in figure 7.47 we have a translate. This part of the code is, was just word for word the same uh, you don't need to change this at all for the for your projects, and what we have here is a is a while loop while b dot input remains and not terminate with end. And each time we go through this loop, the very first statement in this loop is terminate within gets parse line. So parse line parses one line of code, and it adds the code to the code table, and then the number of errors gets incremented by one each time you detect an, an error. And then the, the next uh, statement after uh, the while is we check to see if we terminated within and we might generate another error message. So this you should already have done in the one that you, in the project that you handed in for parsing. But here on the next part of the figure, if num errors equals equals zero, system.out.printf object code and then we go through the code table for int i gets zero, i less than code table dot size, i plus plus. And this time what we do is we do system dot out dot printf and what do we get? What do we print out? So here's a little string placeholder. We print out code table dot get sub i dot generate code. All right. So here's, so, so this time, you know, you will include. The only difference between this project and the project you just handed in is now you're going to include this if num is equals equals zero. All right. And by the way, I also uh, sent you the test file, the a text file that had that test that I ran. So you can use that now to debug your parser uh, to make sure that it gets all completely debugged before you start your code generation. But the code generation is relatively straightforward. Let's take a look now at, um, suppose we do, we translate this. Load word accumulator, 0x, zero 00, zero, no, let's say we do load word accumulator, um, 13, immediate, store word accumulator, 00, zero uh, sorry, store word accumulator, 0x, zero um, let's say zero, 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 a direct. Now, let's just think about how this, uh, how to translate this code by hand and then we'll, we'll see how to, we'll see some tips on how to actually automate, automate it uh, with your assembler. Okay, so now first of all, how do we do this, what do we have, what do we have to look up to do load word accumulator 13 immediate? What do we have to do? We have to do what? Well, what we need to do is we're, we have to somehow know what the opcode for load word accumulator is, right? So here, let's go back and... So how do, so how do we, how do we uh, by manually do this? Well, what we do is we go here in figure 5.2, we look up the mnemonics, right, for load word accumulator. So let's translate, let's translate load word accumulator together here. 
So here in figure 5.2, we go down to load word, and we see down here, we see LDWR, right? And so, the, and so what's the opcode for load word, for load word R? What's the opcode? It's, yes, it's 1100. And then the R is, that, that means this could be either be load word accumulator or load word index register. And because it's load word accumulator, what's the bit? It's zero. Is everybody clear on that? And now, what about the load word accumulator? And that, what's, what about that AAA? That's the addressing mode. So how do we figure out what bits to put for the addressing mode? We know that it's what? In our parsing, we know that it's immediate. And so what do we have to do? We have to go down here to, yeah, table lookup. Well, we'll see. So here in figure 5.1, I is for immediate. So those three bits are what? Zero, zero, zero. zero. All right. And now this 13, what about this 13? That's, get, that needs to be translated to hex. And we stored an integer, but it needs to be translated to hex. Now what is, somebody, can somebody do hex 13 for us? A, B, C, D, 13, 40. Yes, it's D. It's, it's D, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's D. Okay, so this would be, so D is what? So this would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Actually, it's, it would be 0, 0, 0, D in hex. So that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Oh, now what's D? So what's D? 1, D, E, F, yes. All right, is everybody clear on that one? And now let's do store word accumulator. So let's go back to store word accumulator. So how do we do that? We go, come down here to store word. So store word R. And what do we have for the opcode? 1110. 1110. And then the R bit, this is 0. And this is now, this is what? Direct. So now watch this. Let's go to direct. So direct addressing is what? 001. So this is. 0, 0, 1. And then this is 0, 0, 0, A, but in binary it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Right, because 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. So A is 1, 0, 1. Is everybody good? Now we all know how to do this, right? We learned how to do this first couple weeks. Okay? Okay, so this is, this is what it is in binary. Now here's how it needs to be output. Here's the format that it needs to be output in when you, when you output it. It needs to be like this. Now what is this in hex? No, 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 in hex. Is this, this is C, zero, space, what? Zero, zero, space, zero, D. Now is everybody clear on that? And this one has to be what? Now what is this? D, no, is it, isn't it E? It's E1, and this is what? Zero, zero, and this is what? Zero A. So this is how it must appear in the printout. Now notice that there cannot be any trailing spaces here because what you need to be able to do is we need to be able to put this, if you want to make sure it's correct, copy this and paste it into the PEP9 desktop app in the object pane and execute the object and see if it runs. Yeah. And we want it to be separate lines for all of it. And that is a very good point. We want it to be separate lines because otherwise it is a bear to grade and to debug. <laughs> so what we want is we want to see these patterns one per one line per line of source code. Okay, so that's a requirement. Is everybody clear on the formatting? All right. And there can't be any trailing spaces here because otherwise, because the new line counts as the space, as, as the character in between the pairs of hex digits. Now, is everybody clear on that? Okay, so now that's the formatting. But now, you guys, here's the thing. How the heck do we go from this to this. 
how do we go for, how do we go to this load rate accumulator 13 immediate to this C0 because look you guys what did we have to do to do this one we had to know that this was the register R field and this was the what addressing mode and to do this one we had to know that this was the register R field and this was the addressing mode and so how are we going to how are we going to do how are we going to do this well it turns out there is a very very slick way to do this um, and it goes like this <laughs> now check this out actually before we do this let's go back here let's let's take a little let's go back to um, chapter 7 and remember this demo let's remember this demo this Java map demo all right now, do you remember when we did this Java map demo? It, it said, it, we put in Mars and it said planet Mars is red. And then what did it say? Enumerated output P underscore Mar, Mars. But then what did it say? Ordinal output three. Now look, why does Mars have ordinal output three? Why does that enumerated P Mars have ordinal output three? Because here, if you look at public enum planet, what order are these listed in? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Are you with me? So the ordinal value is the what? Yeah, it's, it's actually not an array. So I mean, technically, it's not like an index. But it's like, it's the, or, yeah, it's the number. It start, if you count up starting with zero, OK, using the counting numbers, you know, the natural numbers. So Mercury is zero, Venus is one, Earth is two, Mars is three etc. Are you with me? Now, but look at this. If we go back to chapter 5 and we take a look at this figure 5.1, immediate has what addressing AAA field? 000. Well look, if you define your addressing modes in a separate enum, <laughs> starting with what immediate so if you have like ad immediate you know here here would be your what's the syntax for this brace all right so so if you enumerate them like this ad immediate and then addressing mode what was the next what was the second one is direct and then addressing mode indirect and addressing mode stack relative, etc. Then, you guys, what will the ordinal values of these mnemons be? They, what will the ordinal values be? Zero. Yes, ordinal values will be 0, 1, two, three, etc. Are you with me? Now look, you guys, here's the idea. The idea is this. Well, actually, we don't even need to convert it to binary. It's even easier than that. Because look, yeah, you could do it that way, but there's even an easier way to do it than that. Look, uh, you guys know, now in your... Um, in your generate listing, do you have you figured out now how to convert, how to have Java write an integer value as two hex digits? <laughs> oh, did you do all that stuff yourself? No, no, no. You should, you should let Java. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Percent. Yeah, there's. It's a. Is it like a percent? Yeah, it's like it's like a string format. Yeah, it's a string format feature, right? So, so by now, I think most of you should know how in Java to write a, an integer value as a pair of hex digits. In, hex, in, in, in other words, it'll convert it to hex. Are you with me? So here's the idea. The idea is that what you do is you take the instruction specifier, this whole thing, 
And if you can make this an integer, then Java can give you the C0. Are you with me? If you can, com if you can compute this 11000000, if you, can, if you can compute that as an integer, Java can spit out the C0. And if you can convert 11100001 into an integer, into the right integer, Java can spit out the what? The E1. Now, is everybody clear on that? Well, yeah, yeah. So now here is the, yeah, it's, it's, it's like that. But does, is, everybody, is, every, is everybody with me that if you can figure out, if you can figure out the integer value of this, considering this as an unsigned integer, if you can figure this, if you can calculate the, in, the correct integer for the integer value for this, then Java can convert this integer to a, you know, in base 16 hexadecimal format as two hexadecimal characters. Are you with me? And that's better? Well, look how easy it's going to be. Look how easy it's going to be. Well, here, I'll, now, now comes the trick. Now comes the technique. Because see, look, how are you going to convert this? How, how, are you, how are you going to convert this to the correct integer so that Java can spit out the E1 for this one? Well, look, it's like this. Let's do, let's do the star word accumulator. Let's do the star word accumulator 0x000a comma d. Now watch this. So star word accumulator 0x 000 a comma direct, right? Now, let's go to our figure 5.2 and look at store word accumulator. Store, so that's store word R. Okay, so now, so now what are the bits for store word R? It's, it's 1110RAAA. Actually, I'll tell you what let's do. Yeah, it's, it's store word accumulator 0010. One 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 zero R A A A. Is everybody clear on this? Okay, but now because it's store word accumulator, what do we know? R zero. So because it's store word accumulator, now we know it's one 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 zero zero A A A. Are you with me? But now look, if you take these addressing modes and you just make all three of them zero, what do you have? You have one, 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 zero, 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 zero. Now this bit sequence has an unsigned decimal value. Are you with me? And what is it? What if you consider this to be an unsigned decimal integer what integer is it? Let's, cal let's calculate it. Are you with me? Let's calculate this integer. With, assuming that, the, that, these are all, that the addressing mode is all zeros. Let's calculate this integer. What, what integer is this? Is anyone, can, can you do it? What, what, play, what, what, do we, what do we have to do? What, uh, what is this? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. What is it? 32 plus what? 64 plus what? 128, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 4, 3, 4, 10, 12, 1, 2. That's 224. Are you with me? <laughs> now, watch this. Is, you, know, you know that the store word accumulator, if the addressing mode field is all zeros, is always 224. If, if the, so, here's the thing. Just do what? No, no, no. Well, no. So, so, so how do we? So, so, how, so how do we get this? We just add the what? One. Well, I know, but we can't just add one because we. We add the addressing mode to that. Add the what of the addressing mode? Add the ordinal value of the addressing mode to 224, and you've got the integer. And then Java can print it out the two digits for you. Okay, so here, does everybody see what we're saying? Yeah, hold, hold on, let, let, let me summarize this on the board here. Okay, so look. <clears throat> so, this, so this number, this number, uh, this number uh, binary equals uh, 224 decimal. Okay, so 
So, to get, so, so what, but what, what is this number? This number is what? This, this number here is 225, right? But 1 is the ordinal value of d. So to, so to get, so here. So let me, let's write it out. To get integer value, to get the integer representation of the instruction specifier. To get the integer representation, to get the inter, integer representation of the instruction Specifier. Now, what is the instruction specifier? The instruction specifier is what? It's, it's all eight bits. Opcode, op register R field, addressing AAA field. Right, that's the instruction specifier. To get the integer representation of that, what did we say? Add the ordinal value of the addressing mode to what? 224. Add the ordinal value of the addressing mode, uh, sorry, of the addressing field, add the ordinal value of the addressing mode to what? To 224. Now, how would you, how would you do, and, and you know, if, how would you do it for load word accumulator? How would you do the same thing for load word? You'd have to calculate another what? Another integer. And what would the, what would the integer, what would the integer value for load word accumulator be? Well, these are all zeros because this one happens to be I bad example. <laughs> I shouldn't have made this one zero immediate. But anyway, but so what? What would the integer value for the load word accumulator be? It would be it would be instead of being two hundred twenty four, what would it be? Sixty four plus one twenty eight, right? So look, the point is that every non unary instruction has a what? Has a specific what? Integer value, opcode and addressing mode, mode field and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it has a specific integer value and it's all you have to do is calculate those values and put them in a what? Put them in a Java what? Map. Are you with me? Calculate the integer value for each one of those and what integer value are we talking about? We're talking about the integer value that does what? That assumes the op code and then whatever R field, like if it's load X, load, instead of, being, if, instead of this being load word accumulator, it'd be, it'd be load word X, load, load word index register, then this would be a one, so. And then assume the addressing mode field is all zeros and then boom, look it up and boom. No logic, no code. You don't have to say no nested ifs. If it's this, do this. If it's this, do this. This is just everything's table lookup. Yeah, you you would have one map for all of the non-unary instructions, and would that be an enum map or a hash map? Because what are we looking up? What do we what do we know in our code record? What do we have? What do we have in our code record? What in your code object rather? It's the Naman. So, so what kind of a map would it be? Would it be a hash map? What is the key here in this one? Is it a string or is it an, is it an enumerated? It's an enumerated. So you would use an enumerated map keyed by the mnemonic. And then what would the second field be? What would the type of the second field be? It'd be an integer. Well, the integer that it would be would be the integer that you calculate, assuming that this specific op code for that specific instruction and R, okay, this and R for that specific instruction, with the addressing mode fields always all zeros. And then if you define your addressing mode enums this way, they each have an, the correct ordinal value that you can add to it to get that integer. This is way slick. I mean, the code's going to be, it simplifies the code tremendously. You don't have to do all these checking. You don't have to go to binary. You don't have to, any of that stuff. Got a question? Okay. Yeah, yeah oh, that, okay, that's a good question. What if you have two different R values? And the answer is yes. You need a separate, integer, you, you need a separate entry for add 
yeah, sorry, you need a, here, you would need a separate entry for LDWA and a separate one for LDWX. Yeah, that's a good point. You would have to have that. And because those are different integers, right? Because the R fields are different. But, 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 but you would calculate the addressing fields be, being zero. Yeah, question? Oh, actually, you're right. You could, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good point. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's easier because, because the A. Yeah, but I think, but, it, but it's much easier. I think, but it's easier because you already have these enumed. You already have these enumerated. Well, but like, in, if our parser was supposed to do something with X, is also. Oh, I see. So we're not, it matter. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're right. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I gave you any store word index register instructions. But you should program it as if you did. I mean, you might want to add that later. After this course, you might want to go back and enhance your project, <laughs> or you might want to forget it. <laughs> No, I hope you, uh, you know, this, anyway. Yeah, question? In their own separate enum. And, and, and if you set them up, like this, this scheme works if you set them up so that their ordinal values, are, if you put them in order so that their ordinal values correspond to the, to the decimal value of the three-bit field, binary field. Here, here I, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's calculate the, let's calculate the integer for store word accumulator. What's the integer for store word accumulator? 224. What's, what's 64 plus 128? Here, what is, what is 64 plus 128? So this one is for, store. this one is for load. For oh, this one's for store. Okay, so here. So this one, this one is for store word accumulator. This one, it would be for load word accumulator, right? So now, what is this number? What's 64 plus 128? Say it again. 192. 192. Okay. So here's what. So here's what the a couple of the entries in your table would be like. Okay. So so here's what here's what it be. It would be you. It would be. Um, it would be uh, M L D W A. And that would be 192 and M store word accumulator, and that would be 224, etc. And we're making a table? Yeah, it would be a Java map. And this is a key, and, and it would be an enum map because the key, because you'd be looking this up and you'd be getting this out. And then all you have to do is look that up, add the ordinal value of the, of the, of the um, addressing mode, <clears throat> use Java to convert that one integer to two byte value, and boom, out comes the C0. No, it's, uh, it's the same, you've, you've done it before, get, um, yeah, haven't we, didn't you, you've used, you've used both maps, you've looked up both, both kinds of maps. Oh, oh, we would have to go back and look at Java, yeah, yeah, here, let's, here, let's review that. How, yeah, how do you get the enumerated value? Okay, so here in the Java map demo, it says ordinal output three, so how do we get, how do we get that? So here's our, our uh, maps. So here is our hash map that's where the key is the string, all right? And then the, the um, value part of the key value pair is an enum. And here is the enum map where the key is a, an enumerated and the value part of the key value pair is a string, all right? Now, it, with this one, this is going to be an enum and this is going to be an int. Are you with me? Okay, and let's take a look at how you get the enumerated value. So planet gets uh, maps dot planet table dot get line dot to lowercase. So planet is the enum, right? And then string planet string. So that is the string the way we want to have it printed out. 
and then we print out that, that little message. And then at the bottom it says enumerated output. And it's all you have to do is do what? Put, uh, yeah, put planet to get the enumerated value. And then ordinal, value, ordinal output is what? Planet.ordinal. So you just use the, the enum.ordinal plus the, what you look it up. It can be one super long line of code. <laughs> but I mean, and this works for all of them. Oh, but by, by the way though, you, you guys, there's a different, um, remember it's different with the branch instructions because the branch instructions do not have an AAA field. What do they have? They don't have an addressing, A, the branch instructions do not have an addressing AAA field. What do they have? Here, let's go to figure 5.2 again to the branch instructions. It, they have an addressing what? An addressing A field. And that, that addressing field, if A is Z, what was the rule for that? No, no, for the addressing A field of the branch instructions. There's a table for it. Yes, so here in figure 4.8, the addressing A field, if the A, if the A is zero, it's immediate. If it's one, it's indexed. So that, you know, this doesn't work for that. That has to be done differently. But it can be done the same way. It's all you have to do. I mean, you would still store the integer value in the same table, you know, it's same just like this. Only thing is, instead of adding the, instead of adding the ordinal value of the addressing mode, it's a little bit different if it's a branch instruction. If it's a branch instruction, you add what? You add zero if it's immediate and what? One if it's indexed. Are we good? Does everybody see now? how this works. I think this is a very, I think this is a very slick coding technique because it uses all these maps, you know, which is the dictionary, which is what we learn in data structures, which is key value pair. All right, good deal. See you tomorrow. <laughs>